Okay. Um, third night. Um, day number three. Whatever you will call it. Uh, of my uh, pilot school. You know, going from uh, absolute uh, rookie in every kind of sense um, to wherever. So what I did until now in the first few uh, two sessions actually uh, was flight training straight away nothing else and we're going to start with that uh, I've been into the basic handling did all those um, lessons uh, the first ones went quite okay and then it kind of dropped off a bit <laughs> here straight and level flight just a C <laughs> Um, and then we moved into takeoff and landing. Uh, that is what was on the second night, actually. I hope it works. Yes, it seems. Taxiing, takeoff, dead stick landing. Uh, focus on yoke to land. Then the landing without elevator. Focus on throttle for smooth approach. The landing, combined throttle and yoke. Downwind, follow a traffic pattern to prepare for landing. And the first solo flight. Uh, the first solo flight, I uh, I did that again off screen. Although my plan is to have everything on screen, uh, I kind of cheated a uh, tiny little bit here because I wanted to uh, get a bit better. So I did two um, retries, and in the end, uh, wait a second. I can't see that. I can't see the. I can't see the uh, the actual points I got. Well, um, it was a bit better. I went up to B at least. So tonight uh, it will be uh, all about VFR navigation. Learn about uh, visual flight rules and VFR and how to use the outside world to navigate. Um, by the way, um, after I've done these lessons, the plan is, because this is a sim racing channel really, uh, the plan is to combine those two worlds in a way, the sim racing world and the, the, the um, flight simulation world. And I want, uh, as soon as I'm able to do that, I want to go into the world map and then single out uh, different um, race tracks and see where the next uh, airport will be. Can be a small one, doesn't matter. And then fly above these tracks and see where they are really uh, and look at them from, uh, from above. So we are going to go through all those tracks. That's the idea, at least uh, one at a time. Uh, but first, uh, gotta go uh, into the VFR navigation to learn a bit more about um, how to fly this uh, little plane, the Cessna 152 it is. Uh, they used the, this uh, plane uh, still in uh, pilot uh, trainings. Mm. So for anyone who is planning to be a real-life pilot this is a good start start off point so let's see training good departures the key to good navigation after the takeoff take a safe altitude of 6500 feet 500 feet above the circuit height uh-huh and fly over the runway at a 41 degree heading to start your navigation from a known location you are now ready to navigate so it's again no it's not well yeah it's it's Sedona again right to flax ah we are flying to Flagstaff Seems to be right around the corner, right? 
Okay. Going to see where it will take us. Okay. For each degree off your route. Oh, couldn't read that. Be conscious of the remainder of the law. Runway elevation 1472 meters indicated airspace heading 260 degrees. Today we're going to leave our familiar airport of Sedona and venture south to reach Flagstaff Airport. To guide us, we will rely on the nav log. It references the different legs necessary to reach our final destination. Our first goal is to fly over the runway center at 6,500 feet with a heading of 41 degrees. By doing so, we will be perfectly set up to engage with the first leg of the navlog. After takeoff, we will continue crosswind as if we were following the standard traffic pattern. However, we won't turn down wind. Instead, we will continue climbing to 6,500 feet before turning on course toward the runway center. Okay, you can take off whenever you're ready. Didn't understand a word. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay, let's see. Almost seventeen knot, no, almost five seven. Okay, seventy five, seventy five knots. Okay. As you climb, turn left so you stay in the vicinity of the airport. Six five. Okay, we have to go up to Maintain six five. Maintain seventy five knots. Six. Six two. Six 
six three. Six five. Oops. Almost six five. Now you took a bit too long to reach the target altitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to climb faster to reach a safe altitude. Okay, got it. To ensure accurate navigation. You want an accurate starting point. And what's more accurate than the runway you just departed from? Go ahead and position your plane above the airport. Position above. Take a 41 degree heading. Okay. Got it. Navigation departure. Well done. Okay. That wasn't that hard to do. Next one. Dead reckoning. Navigate using heading and time estimates. Sedona to Munz Park Golf Course. Heading start the clock. Dead reckoning is a method of navigation widely used in VFR flights. This training session is all about the basics of dead reckoning navigation. Starting from a known location at a safe altitude, 6,500 feet above the airport. Take the heading 41 degrees towards your next waypoint, Munz Park 
go of course and start the clock. Maintain the heading and you should find Munz Park go of course after 5 minutes of flight. Basically just need to repeat the operation from waypoint to waypoint to follow plant route, okay. Hey David, how are you doing? Uh, hope you are fine. I'm in here again having not a single clue about what I'm doing. <laughs> But I'm trying. Bust the gold is on the green. <laughs> yeah, I I really don't know what they are talking about uh, with the 41 degrees. Don't get it. But it went okay. The first session went okay. But this will be. Um, important for you know the the project um, about uh, flying above some racetracks uh, I have to learn this VFR navigation thing let's see we're currently at 6500 feet about 30 seconds flight time to Sedona Airport as we make our way toward the runway center let's talk more about navigation okay you need your to break set and maintain a heading. Oh, okay. Lie on your heading indicator. Nice. How is it going? So all these woods are uh, full of nails. Do you have to uh, only uh, take the nails up, um, out of it, uh, or do you also have to? Um, what's it called in English? Uh, when you smooth and. Um, um, smoothen the wood you know uh what's it called you know you go over the wood and smoothen it up not with a sandpaper but with a kind of a tool for that sanding is it called sanding do you have to do that with the wood probably it uh it it, it uh it's probably pretty raw the stuff you you've got there Let's see maintain altitude at 65 ugh already down to 64 okay we're in position over the runway center. Good. Next step is to validate the time. That's a fancy way of saying start your stopwatch. Okay, start your stopwatch. On the nav log, you can see our next waypoint, Munns Park. Is it a 41 degree heading about five minutes away? That okay. means we need to be on a 41 degree heading. Okay. Check your heading indicator and make your turn. Okay. 41. Wait a second. Stuff is pretty smooth. Wait a second. Stuff is pretty smooth. Won't be furniture per se. I'll clean it up. But it just paint it. Nice. That's great. I thought it might be just rough wood that somebody uh, uh, just had lying around in, in front of their yard or something. Terrain level rises. To maintain a safe altitude, we'd better climb to 8,000 feet. 8,000. Make sure you keep okay. the same heading. Okay. Maintain power during your climb. Yeah. Got it. Forty one degrees. I don't know. This is thirty three. Hmm. But it seems to be seems to be okay. It used to be the studs of a neighbor's wall. Ah, oh, okay, I see. Okay, six, 
eight. I have to climb faster. Navigation is basically flying a given heading for a given amount of time. Sometimes you deviate. Seven. But if you track the time flown from your last known position, you'll always have at least a range for your current position. I'm off track. Get back to 41 degrees. Here we go. Here we go. 7273. Okay. Good. Seven four. Seven five. Yeah, I know I'm too slow. Shit. Seven six. Seven seven. Seven eight. It's forty five. Okay, got it. Now okay, smooth. now get back to cruise attitude. Let the speed increase, then set cruise power at 2300 RPM. Okay. Set RPM at 2300. Okay. Okay. Do you see the green patch with the lake on its right? No. This is yes. Mons Park Golf Club. We're okay. almost there. Let's proceed over it and see if the stopwatch matches the nav log estimation. Five minutes. We all know speed can increase or decrease depending on the wind. That's why, at your next waypoint, you'll want to compare your estimated time en route with the actual time flown. Validate your estimate and your progress. Okay. There we are. Well done. 
but there's room for improvement. Navigation to Munns Park is in the books. Okay. We built with sticks over here. One thing I was amazed by as a 15 year old, my dad lived in an old house. Over there, the walls were nearly a meter thick. But I mean, the old house was also out of wood with uh, the meter thick walls. I mean, isn't it because of uh, the the hurricanes? Why you built um, with air? I have, I have no idea. I know with earthquakes, at least in earthquake regions, it's better to build with wood. Maybe that's the same thing with earth um, with uh, hurricanes. Probably not. Probably there's nothing you can do against hurricanes, right? I'm completely ignorant about that. <laughs> I have to be honest here. To be honest, I didn't get the, the whole session here. I mean, the estimated time was five minutes. I was there in 6.30. What does it say? Let's see. Next one is landmark navigation. Navigate using key landmarks. So we're going from Munts Park to Flagstaff Pulliam Airport. So this is all broken down into um, small chunks. It's one big, the whole VFR navigation lessons, it seems to be one big lesson broken down in smaller chunks. It's about cost and simplicity to build very little is built to last here. I was comparing to house my dad. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, I see. Yeah, of course, here. Uh, but um, there is a new um, kind of... Um, it's an emerging trend, really, to build with wood also over here. I mean, traditionally, it's, it's all with... Uh, uh, bricks uh, and you know you know the deal if you've, you've, you've seen it uh, with big walls and everything I mean my walls here uh, some walls are very very uh, thin I mean I'm at the fourth story of a um, you know compartment uh, building apartment building uh, but there are uh, some uh, walls that are uh, you know for the static important for the, for the static they are i would say yes a meter yeah could be could be but uh, as i said uh it's uh, it's been a trend really to go into uh wooden houses because it's very fast you can uh some of these houses you can just buy buy them and uh, get it um transported to your you know where you want to have it when you buy some some uh, land or whatever, just put put the, the whole house on, on top of it, stuff like that. That was something that never existed here, but it's uh, something that's uh, emerging more and more. Okay, let's see. And uh, to be honest, I kind of like uh, um, wooden houses. It's, uh, most of the time, at least, it looks nice. I mean, here, of course, it's the problem uh, with uh, the cold. You don't have that in Florida, I guess. But here, it's uh, in, in Celsius, sometimes it's minus 20 degrees. Um, very seldomly, but it happens. So that's probably something you don't you don't have in Florida. 
All right, we're currently at 8,000 feet, approximately 30 seconds out from Munns Park Golf Club. While we fly over it, let's talk about landmark navigation. I'm listening. One of the easier methods of navigation involves following identifiable landmarks, like highways. And it just so happens we have one below us. Do you see the highway on your left? Yes. That highway leads all the way to Flagstaff. Okay. Let's follow it. And we should reach Flagstaff Airport in six to seven minutes. Let's go. Stopwatch here and start it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm getting a bit more accurate. I think this is great. Look at that. Flagstaff Airport's altitude is around 7,000 feet. Oh. Unlike in Sedona, the traffic pattern altitude there is standard. This means its altitude is 1,000 feet above the airport, which works out to 8,000 feet. We need to fly over the airport before entering the traffic pattern. 23 RPMs. Since we don't want to interfere with other aircraft already in the traffic pattern, let's fly at least 500 feet above pattern altitude. Off pattern altitude. So let's climb to 8,500 feet on the way. Keep it at full power while you're climbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get up. Much smoother than last weekend, I have to say. Much smoother. A2. A3. I can't see the freeway anymore. Where is it? Shit. Follow the highway. Where's the highway? Ah, there it is. There it is. Yes, I'm working on it. Okay. We've been off course for too long. Correct, you're heading to the right. Let's start again. I don't get it. There is... Okay, we're back over the highway again. Stick to it and you'll reach the destination. To make sure we don't miss it. Reset your stopwatch here and start it again. Okay. <laughs> Let's get 
up to 8,000 again. Good. So, there's the freeway. Flagstaff Airport's altitude is around 7,000 feet. Unlike in Sedona, the traffic pattern altitude there is standard. This means its altitude is 1,000 feet above the airport, which works out to 8,000 feet. You need to fly over the airport before entering the traffic pattern. Since we don't want to interfere with other aircraft already in the traffic pattern, let's fly at least 500 feet above pattern altitude. So let's climb to 8,500 feet on the way. Keep it at full power while you're climbing. Did I get that far to the left? First time around. Interesting. So there's the freeway. This time I will keep an eye on it. I was so distracted by uh, looking at the uh, instruments. Perfect. Maintain 8,500 feet until we reach the airport. RPM at 2300. Okay. 2300, yeah. One course. A bit to the left. That's good. Okay, I on on track. Let's see. We might get a couple of days around <laughs> zero degrees. Yeah, <laughs> zero degrees. We do have zero de zero degrees pretty much at the moment at night. Maybe a bit warmer, two or three degrees warmer, but at night it's still extremely cold. I have to go out with a dog every night and it's uh, bah. in April. Slow, 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 slow. There it is. Let's go a bit nearer. This is this is going okay. Could be better, but it could be worse. Okay. Stay like that.
attitude. Still on track. There it is, Flagstaff Airport, on the right side of the highway. You got us here, which is great, but there's definitely room for improvement. Yeah, I know, I know. Good. 22 degrees. Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is unfair. <laughs> Arrival. Okay. Last part of navigation is arriving to destination. In this lesson we will see how to integrate the circuit or traffic pattern of an uncontrolled airport. Start by a fly over the airport at not less than 500 feet above the circuit height. Um, in this case, fly at 8,500. It's a problem. I have to change something here. The height, it's in meters. Um, But they are talking about feet all the time, so I have to change it from metric back to, uh, you know, uh, then turn left and descend to the circuit altitude of 8,000 feet and fly over the runway again to integrate left downwind of the runway 21. Okay, let's see. Over the runway, 8,500. 80 knots and then descend, stay at 80 knots, then flaps 10 degrees, downwind to 8000, base like 65 knots, 77, and then the final approach 65 knots, flaps as required. Okay, um, yeah. Let's do this. Ah. Uh, gotta check one thing, the flaps. What was the flaps controls? Mm, I need to change it. Uh, flaps, 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 instruments and systems, engine instruments, flight control, primary control, trimming, flaps, increase flaps, 10, decrease flaps, 9, so it's here, good, okay. Resume. Ready to fly. Let's go. Flagstaff Airport is right in front of us, and we're currently at 8,500 feet. That's 500 feet above the standard traffic pattern. It's a good altitude to avoid interfering with aircraft already in the pattern. Okay. Proceed above the terrain, making sure you maintain our current altitude. Good. 23. Good. A bit too high. Let's get down a bit. 
tiny little bit. It's another golf course. Maybe not. Maybe it's just some ponds. The other side. There's nothing. So where is Flagstaff? Is this Flagstaff? It's just a few houses it seems. We're going to land on runway 21, coming okay. from the right to the left. We'll be following a left-hand traffic pattern as we did in Sedona. Ready? Reduce speed to 80 knots and start a turn to the left a 120 degree heading. Okay. Go. As we pass over the runway again, start descending to 8,000 feet, still maintaining 80 knots. There's You'll the enter runway. the pattern in the middle of the downwind leg for runway 21. Okay. Good. Let's go down. Eighty. Good. We've got clearance to enter the downwind leg and land on runway 21. Keep your attitude, then follow the standard pattern.
Set speed to 65. Turn left into base 21. Seventy, seventy knots, sixty-five, almost, okay, final turn, it's going well so far, I would say, okay, final turn. Fast. Need more flaps. Okay. Nice! Good integration, but something tells me you can do even better. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> that was nice. There's one thing I don't like about the simulation. That you don't have a replay. I would love to see uh, what I did by replay. It's really bad. I know it's in beta um, or in developer mode or whatever, but that's really uh, too bad. <laughs> 